hi. So I thought now was as good a time as any to talk about teenagers and sleep. Because if your house is anything like mine, then you've got one or more teenagers who are wide awake past their parents' bedtime, and then sleeping in long after the school alarm would have gone off. Might also have parents or carers at home who are worried about the effects of the late nights, or becoming increasingly frustrated at trying to get a teen out of bed at what they consider a reasonable time. You might like to watch this video together, as parents or carers and teenagers, and pause it if there's anything that you think is worth discussing. So what is a reasonable sleep schedule for a teenager? To answer that we need to think about what our body does to prepare for sleep and also what it's doing while we are asleep. You may have heard of something called the circadian rhythm. That's the natural pattern of sleeping and waking which all animals have. In conversation we call it the body clock. It's controlled by the hypothalamus, a small but really important part of our brains. In a fully developed adult brain, the body clock's on for around 16 hours, so we get about 8 hours sleep. As daylight starts to disappear, the body produces a hormone called melatonin, and that prepares the brain for sleep, so that's what makes us sleepy in the evenings. Children have usually reached that body clock pattern by around the age of 9 or 10. Teenagers are different though. They need slightly more sleep than their younger siblings or adults. Around 9 hours a night is a healthy goal for a teenager. In teenagers, the melatonin release starts much later in the evening, often not before 11pm. And that can mean that teenagers start to feel sleepy much later than the rest of their family. When this happens depends on how far through puberty a teenager is, and so it can vary throughout the teenage years. So if as a teenager a natural sleep time is after 11pm and we need 9 hours sleep, we're not going to be ready to wake up at that 7am alarm. And in fact tests have shown that some teenagers are still producing melatonin in mid-morning. As parents, we recognise those mornings. They're the ones where we go in, we ask them to wake up, they grunt at us, we leave the room, and 20 minutes later they're still fast asleep. Is this really their fault? We talk about teenagers being lazy, but their bodies are telling them it's not time to wake up yet. They haven't had all of the sleep that they need. It might be a nice time to pause the video here and talk about the current sleep routines in your house. If left to its natural pattern, a teenager's body might sleep from midnight to 9am. How does that fit in with the routine on a school day? What about at the weekend or on a holiday? Do any of you feel different about bedtime and get up times now than you did earlier? How do you feel about the start times of secondary schools now that you have this information? So why does the teenage body need more sleep? You might like to talk about any ideas that you have. While you're sleeping, your brain is working hard, especially as a teenager. Teenagers' brains grow and change a lot. You might hear this called plasticity. It happens at every age, but happens at a much higher rate at the age of 0-2 to 2, or as teenagers. The number and strength of connections between brain cells, which we call neurons, is what builds learning. The sleeping brain practices the things it did when it was awake, strengthening connections between neurons, making memories stronger and reinforcing learning. We often say we'll sleep on it. And that's for good reason, because our brain is working through the information on processing what happened in the day. The next time we come to a task or we think about a problem, we might find it easier than before. We might find we can come up with a solution that we couldn't think of the day before. And teenagers have a lot to learn. So academically, they're heading towards exams, but also socially, they're learning to navigate the world more independently and deal with new situations by themselves. They don't rely on us family members as much anymore. They're learning how to be an adult, and that's a really big thing. These teenage years are really important for the brain, and maybe that's why teenagers need the extra hour of sleep. Perhaps it's worth discussing together what you do in the hours before bed. What choices will have a positive impact on what your brain processes overnight? Which choices will have a negative impact? What do you think happens if you don't get enough sleep? You'll probably recognise that you're less motivated when you've not slept well. You can be impatient. Perhaps you're quicker to yell or snap at somebody. You might find that not getting enough sleep makes it harder to get on with friends or family members. Not getting enough sleep can make, mean that you make poor judgments and unhealthy food choices. It can mean you have more accidents. It can give you poor immunity, which means that you get ill more often. It can mean you have a worse memory and find it harder to concentrate, and that can make schoolwork hard. 
Some research has shown that you're 40 times more likely to suffer with depression or anxiety if you're sleep deprived. So it's clear that sleep is important. Do you get enough sleep? Only 15% of teenagers reported getting eight or a, eight and a half hours or more sleep on a school night. And it can be a problem if you're not naturally sleepy until late and then you have to get up early in time for school. There aren't that many hours where you can get the sleep that you need. But what can you do to help? The answer is going to vary between teenagers and their families. But here are some suggestions of things that you might think about. If you find it hard to fall asleep at a sensible time, how can you make your room more suitable for winding down and encouraging sleep? Can you develop any consistent routines that tell your body it's time for bed? A bath? Or a book under a blanket, maybe? If you're naturally alert late, what can you do to calm your body down? Low lights? Or milk? If you find it hard to wake up, do you need someone to wake you in the morning? Or will an alarm clock do? How can you make you sure you wake up to bright lights? to tell your body that it's the start of day. Can you plan in some active time to get your body awake? As a family, you might like to talk about an acceptable wake up time. Can you agree on what is a reasonable lion? Is that going to be different on different days of the week? A set bedtime has been shown to improve the mental health of teenagers. It's not always that popular with teenagers, but maybe you can come to a compromise on when that set bedtime should be. What will work with your body clock? Food for thought.